No, 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 no,
Okay, any questions? We have a uh, vote. Take 
the way I understand it is people can invest in the ass and they can, you know, all these capital investors can avoid a lot of uh, uh, capital gains tax, income tax while it's taking place, and they can provide a lot of money where they can't, you know, get a return on their investment anywhere else according to this. And the federal government's pushing this. I had a meeting with the, uh, with the uh, regional director for HUD in Oklahoma City. I went out there and got appointment because we had some issues with our audit, you know, and our HUD, I mean, our uh, HUD programs, our housing. And so I took it for myself to set up a meeting and got with the director. And we could be a poster tribe basically know what a poster child is. We could be a poster tribe because there's no, no tribes that are taking advantage of this right now. The, the area director was very excited when he heard that we we're trying to move forward with the opportunity zone. So I think that's something that we really need to, to, to take a serious look at. And uh, so anyway, we have this uh, CRW Worldwide company has uh, got some big projects going that you could do is could be basically the uh, developer of and get involved with the office and having some good income for our folks for us. Do you have any more information on the opportunity zone? There's a, there's, if you go on the website, I'm not real computer literate, but you can look up <coughs> on the website and uh, you can find out all kinds of information about it, and especially in HUD. You know, ben Carson's the HUD director, secretary of HUD, where in, in Washington, D.C., he's pushing this thing. Um, I, 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 I kind of understand it, but it's hard to explain. You know, we need somebody. That gentleman sitting right there can definitely explain it. He had some questions. The man sitting right there, he understands opportunity zones about as well as anybody. So I, I would ask you to maybe pull him aside after the meeting and talk to him, and he can give you some good. But uh, anyway, go ahead, Charles. That uh, property in Claymore, well, mentioned it before. You know, all summer long, people used it for like a fruit market or something. They pull in there and they sell the fruit and stuff yeah, off of it. If it's not that, then they got semi truck parked there. Sitting there for a parking area. Yeah. I've called them two or three times over there. Last year, we had some people and they wanted to lease it from us for selling, I think they had shrimp or something they were selling off there. You know, it's just peddling it right there. But that's a good place for a sign. We're looking at that you know, for one of our billboard signs, too. That's one of the old smoke shop problems. Yeah. Well, I think we need to pursue the smoke shop myself, but you know, not everybody wants to go up and get after it. Not me. Mm -hmm. this one. Somebody the other day had mentioned something to me about a member had gotten with them, and it had to do with um, a property that we had over to work there. And they were, it was an old school, they were wanting to see about re, doing some reconstruction or something. Mm -hmm. It was somebody. There's an old school that belongs to us over there? Well, it, I don't know if it belongs to oh. us or if it's just within the jurisdiction there. Well, it'll be in the jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I don't remember who it was that told me. What do they want to do with it? Right. They're, they're wanting to see if we would kind of assist and help with some kind of reconstruction. And, uh, it was just a real brief. I just wanted to see if anyone would remember saying anything. I don't, I don't know. I haven't been contacted with about that. Hmm? A historical site, maybe, or something? I don't know. They said it's an old abandoned school. Okay. Well, think about that when you get contacts and bring that back. Okay. I don't know. Someone said something to me about it the other day, but I was just like, yeah, it was during the celebration. They said someone wanted to speak to me, and I never could find the person that they were talking to. One of the things that I've asked for before that they don't have to live of all the property right. that we that we have because we have property in a lot of different places yeah. and uh, we discussed that in housing the other day uh, but anyway that's a, a horse of a different color but you know we're working on some things in housing that are really positive and in regards to that you know we do need to know what we have to yeah. we get more we can for the real estate real estate director or whatever we have office and certainly needs that attention. Real estate. Okay. Real estate office needs attention. Yes. Three times. Yes. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll go down to item number seven, public forum. 
And note the person who's wishing to speak. If you're in public forum, you have four minutes to address your topic. George, are you putting me on the public forum? Yes, sir. Four minutes. Four. Four. four hours. Four minutes. Four minutes. Four hours. <laughs> no questions? No. Sometimes it don't work, brother. I'm <laughs> looking it up right now. I know. Like, <laughs> wall. Yeah. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. I hope the council members in great spirit, good manners, and well health. Let's talk about that one. I asked George Whitford this question, and it deals with that, what do you call it, unrestricted? And the casino closed down, there was some unrestricted money that disappeared from that casino over there. I was still waiting for old George. He did a good job of shoving pencils and pushing chairs and shoving tables down there, but he never did answer the question. That question still remains, you know, what happened to that money? Since I hear I think it'd be up to you to find out exactly what happened to it. I'm restricted now. Okay. All right, that's what I got to talk about. You know, money. I'm restricted money. I got a bunch of point dead to You got what? A bunch of my money has disappeared too. Well, mine disappeared, but I know where it goes. I put it out of my pocket and hand it away, but uh, we don't let anybody else's money here. So we appreciate it, man. I get that big check. I hate to give it out, but I do. Thank you. Yeah, good day. In, in, in regards to that, uh, we did that first uh, phase of that audit, and still considering to do the second phase, we still haven't went that far yet. Due to the fact that we don't know what our funds are and everything right now with the audit and the, the regular audit and, and our budget has been up to so I do think that we're going to finish the process when we finish that audit right there, the forensic audit. That's a question two years ago. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Uh, Justin was the only one to sign in out of the public, and I know that Council Dawson has asked you for some time to speak. So Am I it? Mm -hmm. What I want to talk about is the enrollment committee. These people are sliding back and forth between Cherokee Nation and the UKB. Just zip, 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 zip. <laughs> the person that was complaining about it, his own daughters and sons that was the ones that was doing it. Not only them, but everybody else in the whole world. It looks to me like the Army Enrollment Committee is just sitting on their pennies not doing anything. Somebody needs to wake them up. I think you'd make a good or to do that. Well, I got everybody in the tribe mad at me right now. Set up a committee or something. Now, this is ridiculous the way this thing about this enrollment goes on. It's been going on forever. There's at one time we have, we uh, was working with Cherokee Nation a little bit. Uh, of course, that's not anything good, I don't guess. But uh, anyway, we've been letting people know back and forth. Uh, uh, Cherokee Nation would let us know if somebody relinquished from us. And you know the routine. You know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden here, I don't know, now two years that I've gone, that just all come to an end. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because we're all kin folks. You know, I don't know. Sometimes kin folks have got a whole lot to do with that. <laughs> but is there any way that we could appoint some people or make the old committee get off of their duff and start doing their job? And finding out who's good and who's bad. Uh, you know, you can't sit around and be dual and roll. That's ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Thank well, you very much. I appreciate you the time.
people that are doing or people are actually doing that right now? They're doing it right now. So I think you know, set up a, a thing where if you left that you had to come back to that committee and ask for they had to decide whether you were eligible to, to return? Well, I was, I thought that once they leave us, they can't yeah. come back. Yeah, but then we had Unless, elders, remember? Yeah, we had yeah. elders that were divorced. And well, when, when George was here, he did an ad hoc committee. Right. And we let people come back within a fine line of work. Yeah. Okay. So do we still do we, we still don't have that yet. Okay. So they Initi should be once you leave, you don't. Initially, you initially, it was once you left, you couldn't come back. And a couple years ago, we made a resolution that said one time. You can come back one time. Damn. I don't know what you're saying. I, I will look into that. But the committee is doing her job. What? I'm going to come back one time and that's it. I think what he's talking about and what you all do, I mean, it's not different, but it's, uh, he's, he's looking at it as, you know, checking it out and making sure the people that are doing well with you. All you do is, I'm not saying all you do, but you, you have people that come in and do, uh, mm -hmm. whether they enroll or yeah. they relinquish. Yeah. Maybe what he's talking about is trying to organize an audit or something to ensure that everybody is exclusive. You do do an audit, don't you, Joyce? Yeah. And those are all separated. And we do, like, the enrollment office can't just randomly check on someone. Mm -hmm. Like, if the housing authority asks us to check, if council suspects someone and gets with me, which I do have people call from council, say, hey, can you check on this person for me? Mm -hmm. I can check that way, but I can't just because I think to send the list over. Now, when we did the um, school vouchers, yeah. That was something council stresses, exclusivity. So I did send over a list of all the kids and we're slowly getting that back. They're not doing them all at once. They're sending them to us in like 20, mm -hmm. I think we 20 at a time. back from council uh, passing a resolution there stating that once we could once we found out that they were dual enrolled we took them off we put them as relinquished well council took that authority away from us and said no there has to be a signed relinquishment in their file mm -hmm. but according to the enrollment ordinance once enrollment department finds out they're dual enrolled they're off so that's who Woodrow Proctor told me that they, we can't take people away, the council. So that's why they're doing it. Yep. Right. And at one time, the uh, enrollment so the secretary had authorization to, as soon as that kid <coughs> found out they were no longer a member, then later on, the council that we couldn't even take them off until you all approved that. Oh, it's not you. The council gave approval of my well, maybe we should approve that now to take them off. If they're dual, they shouldn't be dual. They shouldn't even be. Let me, let me say something. I heard Amanda say that they can't just look to see. And obviously it's because they don't have a resolution. Yeah. This right here. All parts right here, people. Right. Now, if we pass a resolution giving her permission to take a look at the current enrollment to decide who is dual and who is exclusive, that would give her the permission to do it. Right. 
Now, we really want to know who's exclusive and who isn't. We've got to give our enrollment office the authority to do it. And once we decide who is and who isn't, how are we going to remedy that? What are we going to do? That's, that starts right here. We are all just the ideas, and I'll tell you what's going to happen here coming up. We're going to have to get to the point where we've got to make a decision. But I don't know how you come find out from Cherokee Nation whether somebody's doing a roll. They're not going to tell you that. Okay. It goes down this office over here. Okay. We ain't worried about what they do down there. It shows up over here and then they've got a problem. I'm saying our people have to go. Okay. Yes. I agree that we're here to take care of this. Uh, but uh, whenever I go out among my constituents, there are people that they honestly do not know whether they are dual enrolled or not. And so I think if we find this dual enrolled, we do need to give them that opportunity. Exactly. Send them a notification. Say you uh, show up. Go one way or the other. Right. We do. On the other side of the fence or we do let them yeah. decide. We have. We how tell do you, them. How do you notify them? You mail. Well, letter. usually the, when they when they apply for services, that's yeah. how they know they're denied. And so they will come in and ask, "Why am I dual uh -huh. enrolled?" And we tell them, "If you want to be exclusive, UKB, yeah. you have to relinquish because from Cherokee Nation." Because a lot of our programs, we're working towards. Uh, this is like a housing. We passed a policy that they have to be exclusive. Yeah, that's, that's, that's housing. That's housing. It's first oh, stamp. Yeah. Verified within. I'll be willing to bet you that this little book they passed around for everybody to sign out here in the brush. Yeah. Now those people put their names on it. They're on their roll down there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They are. Yep. Yeah. The reason I brought this up is that if we get this land in trust, they can tell. They're going to beat our doors. If they think we've got any money from the people that's over with them people down the road there, we'll be breaking our doors down, people. We'll have to put a, a, a quarantine on how many people we can take back. I don't know if you would think it's not a joke. I don't know if it's not a joke. I'm just talking about quarantine. That's the reason I'm bringing this up at this time so we can get it. Knocked in the head before it jumps up and bites them. Okay. Hey, hey, well, are we looking for a resolution or a, a what here? Do we? Do we what? We're actually doing doing this verifying. Yep. We're actually we we work with their registration down there. Their uh, is not going to work with you for that. Take my word for it. If I tell you anything, it'll be a damn lie. <laughs> What is happening is, so keep in mind, numbers is dollars. So we've got to work that into the equation somewhere, too. Well, we're going to have to do that. We can't keep on going. Well, I'm not going to do that, but somehow it counts. That's like, like the mentioned, you know, we have to that's always been known as the exclusive membership. Well, they put some teeth yeah, into that thing and not get laid down on the camp. Because that's not a monthly service or a year. It's a, a one-time year that we do that. So that's why we say to verify, uh, one to verify that list. Every, every two years, people are asked to update the enrollment as well. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Amanda, mm -hmm. I heard you say that you can't just look at there, but you've got you've got your list of all of our tools right now. Mm -hmm. If you had a resolution from the council saying that you can get on there right now and start looking who's dual and who's exclusive, because you can find it out when we do the thing you're just talking about. Yep. How long would it take you to go through our 14,000 whatever members to, to and start to just put a red flag by that says dual? I'd say let's get started and then we'll go from there because it's up oh, to I'm them. Just you. How long would it take you well, to the 20, the 20 list that we send for the kids, it was taking them anywhere from two to three weeks to get back with me. No, they can no, see no, it. No, 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 you missed my no. point. You missed my point. How long would it take you to determine yeah. that? Well, it depends on what uh, me. I can just type in a list and send it over. That okay. takes me now, five minutes. Okay, okay, good. You've got a 14,000 uh, name list there. Unless we know, I, I got an idea that about 7,000 of them are exclusive and about 7,000 are dual. 
because of the stats that we took to DC with us. But if you got red marks by those duels, then we need to notify those people immediately, like Sharon said, you're showing up here dual enrolled. Now it's their responsibility to get down there and get relinquished because there's going to be a time right here coming up before long we're going to have some income coming in, like Johnson said there, and they're going to be saying, hey, why are getting, why, why aren't I getting some of this uh, per capita or profit sharing or dividends that we're dividend out here? And they said, well, you're dual enrolled. And this is for exclusive members. Because well, that, this that's is why unrestricted I would money. If you want that, that's why I would ask council to set a time limit. I mean, how, how long are you going to give them? Because we had an issue in TAG a couple of weeks ago where a lady comes in and she's wanting a tribal TAG and tries to get it with the Cherokee Nation tag, or card. Card, she couldn't do it. Well, no, she did. She dual enrolled. But I said, you can go get a tag from Cherokee Nation. She said, no, yours is cheaper. That's why I'm staying dual enrolled. There you go. Yeah, that's what I want these so, yeah. so could you send a letter to those like... Like Jamie said, put a red dot on them and send all of them a letter. And let them come and let them give, give them a chance if they want to be UKB or CNO. Council needs to put that in a resolution. Let me ask this first. When, when you're saying, you know, have a good red dot, do, can you do that without having to send anything to, to CNO? No, but I have to get verification. She can't, she can't do that. She might now, the, that. now, the ones that we do know are dual road, yes. That's what I'm talking about. But That's the ones that we don't know. Yes. By the list that you have, you can go yes. through there that, yeah. that uh, app that you have can tell you which ones are dual road. Yes. That we know. Can you that send them a letter? Yes. Send yeah. them a letter. Yeah. All those that you have. And anyone that has gone, whether they want to be, you can't well, and I board. think housing does like when they find out they're doing road, they let them know you're going to have to relinquish. And, and again, it's up to that person if they decide they want to go down there and relinquish. Right. But that that's just it. How much of a time well, frame? I'm, I'm going to have to say something here about housing. If that's federal dollars. We can't discriminate. But when it's unrestricted money, we can damn sure discriminate. The reason I brought this up was that one of the gentlemen come to me at the celebration told me that two of his daughters are dual and roll. I don't want them to be dual and roll. So, you know, there you go. Well, I asked that question when I first started on the council, you know, turn yeah. dual and roll and uh, exclusive. And I wanted to know how many of my constituents were dual and roll. But anyway, to make a long story short, I was told by someone that to obtain government money like motor fuel tax dollars so forth we had to have our numbers up to year and that is why we kept a lot of the dual and rural people and now though after being here for six months i realize that we're still not getting a whole lot of our government dollars and so you know what difference is it? <laughs> uh, yeah what do you got to say i see it's waving on over there Florida, go ahead I'll tell you what the regs say. The regs say that um, a tribal membership supersedes a descendancy. All they have down there is a descendancy. Right. They don't have any enrollment. And you can't make people relinquish something they don't have. <laughs> there is no dual enrollment. That's there is no true. dual enrollment. If they're enrolled here, that's the only enrollment they've got. No. I can check, but I mean, that's why they call their members citizens. Yeah. And they they do have a descendancy list, and you are a citizen if you sign up with them on their descendancy list. But I'll take a look at the regs and and everything and talk sure. with uh, the yeah. they, don't, they don't have an enrollment when that, <laughs> when that census comes out that's what they use they use those that mark Native Americans so they take that number and that's how they get that large number they have is by the census well, well I could say I'm Native census. American that's not <laughs> 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 Yes. 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 Yes.
We're doing it <coughs> with it right now, but I know we want numbers. Believe you me, I want numbers as well. So we'll go from there. So having said that, I'm going to move on to item number eight and new businesses and go from there. So therefore, the rules of the, the Constitution defining what the council's roles are don't apply. If we decide that you four, we want you four to make decisions under an HR auspice, you are completely qualified to do that. It does not restrict the chief from voting because he's not voting in the capacity as chief. He's voting as a member of a board. Therefore, the rules of the Constitution don't apply. So that, that's, that's kind of a specious. Why have a Constitution? They don't apply. The Constitution doesn't apply in this regard, but the rules of your position, you're not sitting, you're not sitting as a, the assistant chief of the tribe, you're sitting as a member of a, of a quasi HR board. And, and in, in that position, you are qualified to vote or whatever rules regulate that particular board. What if, Regardless I, of who it is. What if I decide I don't want to sit there and I want to then speak delegate, to delegate that to you? Well, then, 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 then I, would, I would assume the same role that you currently because I don't think the Constitution says that we can subordinate, our, subordinate ourselves. We're to appoint subordinate personnel, committees, or chairmen, or I mean organizations to handle these types of deals. In that respect, I understand it that we can't be subordinates to ourselves. So therefore, we need to, I don't care who's sitting on the committee, but it should be somebody that has intelligence, background, education that can go through these. Uh, uh, resumes or, or applications, you know, subjectively, and go and pick them out, just like we heard earlier here, uh, looking through four. Well, so, nobody, nobody's arguing you know, that at all. I understand that, but what the big argument is here is that uh, there, is there a resolution that says from this whole vote, this whole council, that there's four officers are to do that? Yes. No, I think we discussed it as a council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think. I believe there is a resolution yeah, a setting the four officers to fill in for the EDTO and HR. I believe there is. Like but I mean, is fully authorized to subordinate. Yeah, but council can decide today. Council can decide today to do it differently and set up a separate committee. I mean, you can change the resolution that's in effect. Joyce, did that pass? That resolution did it pass? I don't, I don't remember a resolution. I remember we talked about it. I thought we just did it by decree. 
I don't know what it's been for the reason. Peter Parson, L.D. came up here with an application that we talked about. And I realized that we don't have an HR, but, you know, and putting a community together for this, once we get an HR, and that HR hopefully will be a professional and we'll be able to do this with the council's help. You know, there's so many. Uh, well, let me say, too, this let me say, too, these three names here are not are not the committee to hire the HR. They were just a, a committee to look over all the applications and then they were going to bring whatever, three, five, whatever, back to the council. Well, if we're going to put a committee together, I, I don't agree with this committee that's on there. I don't know no, why. That's, that's what I said. Why, why wouldn't you? Because that, that, that was my soul when I just now spoke in regards to that. I'm withdrawn at the because there was numerous emails as to this committee. So that's why I said I'm withdrawing that. But I need a, I need a solution as to how we're going to place this HR. Now the council sat and said, before I was even asked, out of their position as an officer, but as more than for that. So I'm trying to find all this all these so things we're going to do is just look at it for 2030 and then bring it to us. I just need a solution because I don't have the time. I want to resign. I want to resign from that position. I want to designate mine. I don't have the time. I've got too many other things going on to uh, set to go through 23 resumes, and it wouldn't make any difference if I picked out one. There's somebody going to gripe about who I picked out, so I'm going to stay moving. Yeah, look at the situation that we're in with just the committee that we were trying to form with these three people. I love everybody. Plus, that's 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 look at the thing is, is the reason the Greenest Thing Committee didn't take it is because there was someone who had a problem with me being on there. There was nothing said about the other traffic Where's the love? Where's the love? We discussed in the last executive session that the library committee would do this. We started the process, and then in the middle of the process, it was stopped due to, they said that we, it was unconstitutional for the grievance committee to do that, due to the fact that uh, we wasn't appointed <coughs> by a vote to do it. We were, we, it was only discussed and agreed upon in executive session. I don't so, even remember discussing it. I believe the grievance committee is unconstitutional. I, 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 right. right. I also agree. So, and that's what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just trying to get an HR. Yeah. I'm going to use the word I, which I should, but the HR position, we just need that field. Right. I mean, it just needs to be filled. <coughs> so that, I'm just trying to take the best thing possible and get in place. But when I sent this out, it, it brought a lot of negativity, so that's why I'm withdrawing it, but I need a solution. And it brought discrimination out. out. That's what it brought. Because so, I, I saw in the Facebook thing. Let's put them all on the board and everybody blind them to a bar. So, these are the ones that are discriminated against. Mr. Chairman, could I have a voice in this since my uh, name is on that list? Go quick. Is the motion okay. in the order? Wait, no. Wait, there you are. I need to say something. Okay, I had volunteered for this position along with others, and I guess no good deed goes unpunished. I've been volunteering for things without pay. You don't even know what I do behind the scenes. So anyway, I was going to recuse myself anyway based on um, advice from someone. But uh, I want to say that the grievance committee that was put forward in no way, shape, or form should be a committee for like these two right here. I don't believe they're objective. They held a grievance committee on a person, and they voted by way of who they liked and who they didn't like. And it was actually submitted for a criminal investigation. Now that is BS. 
So I just want to say I think you guys should recuse yourself from the grievance committee. You're have not you objective, have you and you play any, favoritism. Have you seen the Let me finish. I have the floor. The other thing is, you keep saying the P and P. Let's have the council follow the policies and procedures. Why don't we follow the Dane Constitution? Let's do that because the council shall appoint subordinates, committees, and you can't appoint yourself, just like the assistant chief said. That's right. So. Anyways, I'm done, but Here. you can have your speech Here. now. Yeah, have you seen the evidence on the grievance of why? No, you didn't look at the right thing. You didn't look at the right thing. Okay, having said that, having said that, my belief is that the council can appoint council members on the committee. No. Doesn't say no, you can't. It doesn't say you can't. It's important. Having said that, you're not subordinate to yourself. This is a special committee. It has a duration and time. It's only for a short period. It's not forever and ever and ever. They're not making a major decision that affects dollars and cents. All they're doing is referring the group of people so we can make a decision. That's all it was intended. I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion. We seem to be three people or four, whatever it is, as it is. From the I'm going to, I'm going to over. I'm going to let you make that motion, but I'm going to say something. About it. Just as it was said about me, just as it was said about me in the beginning, that my political paybacks. That's what you're going to get here. Payback, payback. What are you talking about? Payback. That's what you get. It's not an unbiased situation here. We want unbiased people in there, okay? okay. That's what I'm saying. Mary, uh, I've withdrawn item number one. Okay. I've just withdrawn it. Um, so, having said, okay, I'm sorry. You, you were standing for a while. Go okay. fast, okay? No, no problem. I have been through many committees for hiring through various tribal, state, federal programs during my career. What we have always looked at with these hiring committees that I've been a part of as an employee is the employees that work with that position are the ones that usually sit on that committee, look at the applications, and make that recommendation. That is how, when I worked at the university, we did it. When I looked at, with the federal government, we did it. When I worked with another tribe, we did it that way. When I worked with the state, the employees that work with that position are the ones that looks at the applications, makes that selection, maybe two or three of them, and then they are brought here before the council for that final selection. You have 40-something employees that you can look at to make a decision to appoint to that committee to look at these applications. It would, that is how we pay, I've been living in the past with other employees. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Check. Open the suggestion. You had LD just make a good selection. <coughs> would you be interested in being on the sex selection committee? Yeah. I want to put forth a resolution no, to form a three-person committee that is from the public that does have some experience in doing this. Let's do this, let's all vote on this, and let this committee whittle these down, bring these before the council, and let's get somebody hired, like now. I agree. I make a motion. I make a motion. You know, you I make a motion to form a three-man committee, like now. Who, who's name? Huh? Say the name. How am I going to say? All right, Ed. Ed McLemore. She's already said that she would recuse herself. Correct. Um, who else? Somebody? Anybody got a name? Somebody discussing? LD. She recused herself. LD wants to retire. Do you want to be on this committee? Because we're going to do it like quick. I will do it if it's just for this HR. Yes. Okay. Yes. LD. I just gonna say nobody on this council. Joe Squirrel. 
I tell y'all. I tell y'all. Joe Squirrel, do you want to? Would you like to be on a uh, hiring committee? It's an interview committee. It's an interview, interview committee to help us get somebody hired for human resources. Yeah. Okay. We got three people. Elvin Stevens. Yes. I tell you what, they killed me when not been driving anymore. We make a damn mountain out of more here. Yeah. Okay. That's good and ridiculous. Right. 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 Damn, I tell you what, all, all we got to do here is get the point uh, three or four people here and we're making a big issue of it. Utah! That's what I said. Yeah. We got three members there, correct? Oh, good. Yeah. I, I replaced uh, Ed with Jeff uh, Professor. Why? No, no, we just no. We just said no council. Nobody on the council. We just, I just said nobody on the council because it causes too much chaos between everybody. We just need three people from the public. I gave her three people, and I made her, and I'll second. You second my motion. All right. Before we go into the vote, I want to answer your question: Why are we breaking the mountain out of the motor? Because you know what? After the past chiefs have gone through here. They did everything they could against this tribe. All of a sudden, this chief can't do anything. Well, then they've been getting big. He not if that's the case. That was well, not me. What we're talking about. Well, you know, when you start telling them they were against this tribe, that person needs to be impeached. If they're a tribal member, guess what? Yeah. Well, Joyce, let's go all on. All right, we have a little bit of a right. Joyce, let's go on. The chiefs generally select those positions. No. We have what? You've taken it away from the chief. No. Okay, let's go. No, we don't have to go. We have a council. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go. Here we go. Item number one. Number one. Place of number one. All the language under number one is withdrawn. In place of item number one, it's been brought to light to approve the three-member uh, committee to review the applications for the HR position only. And we have three names submitted. Eldine Stevens, Ed McLemore, and Joe Squirrel. We have a motion by Jeannie, a second by LMA for approval of this three-member Now, item number three is council just 
discussion to vote and approve, disapprove the amendment to section four, part 16 of the discharge system and human resource policy and procedure. Employees discharged for cost may be re-employed, may not be re-employed. Given a contract or served as consultant, denial of employee may be overturned by the council. Technically, that says that once you're discharged, you can't be re-employed. If, in fact, the council overturns it, that's not written in the policy, but here it is now. I ask you to vote on it. What does the policy say? The same. So you're just adding this yes. to, to that part? Yes. If an employee has been terminated from the call. What kind of, what kind of cause is this, I guess? Well, it could be anything. Yeah. Personal reasons. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. Because let me, let me point out something here. We had a couple of uh, bookkeepers that got sent down the road here in January this year. Cause, I guess, people are going to call us. Well, let's suppose that those people uh, go and get the proper training that was necessary, maybe they were lacking, and they made a, you know, an example that they could be, instead of being in support, it could be properly done. You're saying that we can't hire them kind of people back after they get? Right. I, say, I think the example it. is marijuana. If, if somebody got fired from using uh, marijuana for medicinal reasons, uh, under old policy, it didn't matter why they used it. They used the legal substance. They got fired. But then once they come with medical, now things have changed. Now they can prove through a doctor that they actually need that for anxiety or whatever medicinal reason they're using I don't, it. I, don't agree I with think it. They, they should be. They shouldn't be restricted. I just, everything I changed. I don't agree with this. Okay, the council can overturn it. They can, in fact, come back to work. What do you do? Well, the council can overturn anything. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's your the footnote in the council? It's just that they choose to. I mean, if there's, if there's, if there's somebody. So this is already in place. No, oh, there's yeah, not in place. This is this is the personnel. So this would be like if there, the, 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 Both. the cause would not be, in their eyes, would be mine. Not a major cost. Both. Because, so okay, because them. if it was theft, if it was assault, if it was any of those categories there, was the woman back here? Okay. But the thing is, is it, that needs to be stipulated because if that's not stipulated as to what the cause, just say for instance, if it, like you said, if, it, if somebody murdered somebody, you know, and you fired them for that reason, you don't want them back. You know, if you don't want them back, then that's cause. But if it's got to do with, if it's got to do with, I just don't want that person hired back because I don't like that person, then that's not cause. You know, and you're going to get the two interchangeable. It's going to. Let's get away from hiring. Let's get to the depth of the language here. Also seems to stipulate uh, contractual agreements with third parties. Uh, if I work if I work for Walmart you, and you fired me from here, you going to refuse to do business with Walmart because I work for Walmart? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is it's not change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to say, I think. I'm looking for the text of four cause and the policies. Just give me a moment. It's my computer's being slow. Well, yes. uh, if you don't want it, don't go for it or don't make a motion, don't second it. We're going. Let him, let him tell us what the cause, like, for causes, and then, I mean, maybe we can just table it, come back, and maybe rewrite the resolutions. What's wrong with this? I get it. I get it. Yeah. Don't vote. Let it die. Just let it die. Just let it die. Don't vote for it. Don't vote for it. They were nails. They were nails. They were nails. They were nails. We can hear what the talk is later, okay. Okay. What, what I'm reading here is if we fired somebody in the past, 
we can bring them back as a town. Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying we, we, they're non rehirable yeah. Once they're removed, we can do what we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. So, that's what I'm saying. So this doesn't even make any difference no matter what anyway. Because we can always vote to bring them back if we want to bring them back anyway. That's what I, that's what I said a while ago. You said, no, that's not the case. That's not the case. Is it retroactive? Is it effective? Is this going forward? Going forward. Currently, uh, Section 416 says discharge. The tribe reserves the right to discharge any employee at any time with or without cause and with or without notice. The conduct rules do not constitute an express or implied contract of continued or future employment for the employee, nor do they guarantee the employee any procedures such as reprimand, warning, or probation. Further, the tribe reserves the right to evaluate each instance of misconduct to determine the severity of corrective action and what <coughs> discipline the tribe will impose up to and including discharge. Since the tribe's employment is employment at will, circumstances may also arise where an employee's employment is terminated by the tribe for reasons unrelated to misconduct. Upon termination of employment, all UKB property must be returned to the tribe, and any money owed to the tribe must be repaid. So your current policies and procedures, since you're an at-will tribe, don't actually define what for cause is. But typically for cause is some misconduct you did in the work or reflecting poorly on your employer that got you fired. It's not a reduction in force, a layoff, or uh, we're firing you because you don't have the money. It's you did something that reflects poorly on your employer. Not even necessarily that. Not even that, right. Yeah. You stole money. So basically, would that do your, the need for a, a, a grievance case? Because we can fire them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I believe it also gives them the right to the Your policies are a combination of at will and not at will because you do have things like a grievance committee when really you don't need that because it's at will so you can fire just whenever you want. So this would add to this section that if someone is fired for cause, they can't come back.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.